All right, so you want to lose weight. Hopefully, you started the ketogenic diet and you want to take your results to the next level. Well, you're already drinking water. Might as well add a few things to take it to the next level. The first thing to realize is that weight is a symptom, it's not the problem, it's not the cause. The underlying cause is too much insulin. A couple things about insulin that you may already know this is just a refresher. Insulin is the main fat storing hormone. In the presence of even a little bit of insulin, you can't burn fat. So insulin prevents the burning of fat. And when you have too much insulin over time, you develop something called insulin resistance. Now, at first, you might think this is a good thing because insulin resistance sounds like you're resisting insulin, so you'll actually lose weight. But in reality, what happens with insulin resistance is the body overcompensates and it has to make a lot more insulin to penetrate this resistance. So people that have insulin resistance have a lot more insulin, okay? And that's the problem. And of course, you get insulin resistance by having too much insulin because your body is trying to protect you against too much of it. So it develops this barrier. But this whole thing gets worse over time unless the triggers to insulin are addressed. Uh, you may already know this, but there's three things that trigger insulin. Carbs trigger insulin, especially the more refined the carb is, like sugar. Also, eating triggers insulin. This is why frequent eating and snacks are really bad. But the third thing, which I just talked about, is having insulin resistance, okay? That is the thing that will just increase more insulin. And there's just one more really important thing that I want to explain to you. When you have insulin resistance, which the majority of the population has, and they get on a low-carb diet, they cut out carbs, eating no sugar, and then they check their blood sugars, and the sugar goes higher. Or, for example, they're a diabetic, and the sugar just keeps going higher, but they're not eating any sugar. That sugar is coming from somewhere. It's coming from the liver. The liver is converting other things like fat, like protein, like ketones, into sugar. This is called gluconeogenesis. And so the worse insulin resistance that you had going into this, the more you might find your blood sugars are still a bit high for a while. All you have to do is continue this program, push through it, do what I'm going to tell you next, and over time, that blood sugar will come down. But that extra sugar in your blood is not coming from your diet. It's coming from your liver making this other conversion. I should probably just mention one thing too. If someone is overweight or they're a diabetic or they have insulin resistance, there's going to be this, uh, it's called a basal insulin level, like an underlying level of insulin that your body is operating off of just to keep things in check. Uh, that has nothing to do with what you're eating or whatever, but there's just going to be higher amounts of insulin flowing through your blood if you are overweight or you're diabetic or you have insulin resistance. So I just wanted to bring that up because some people expect the same weight loss as their spouse, but maybe their spouse doesn't have insulin resistance as bad. So because your basal or basic insulin levels are just higher than they should be because of years of insulin resistance, it's going to be a little bit tougher to lose weight initially compared to someone else who just doesn't have that level of insulin flowing through their bloodstream. The whole goal of this video is to hyper-focus on fixing this insulin resistance problem so you can lose the most weight possible in the shortest amount of time. So we want to compound things. We want to get you on a healthy version of the ketogenic diet. We want you to do intermittent fasting. But with your fluids, you can add just a few things just to take it to the next level. So we're talking about three things, lemon, apple cider vinegar, and cinnamon. Now, if you were to add just two, maybe three of these drinks per day, you would see significant improvements in your program. And I'm talking about weight loss because you're addressing this insulin issue. And even if you're not perfect in the diet, this will actually improve things greatly. All right, so let's first talk about apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar has something called acetic acid. Acetic acid is a potent blood sugar lowering compound, okay? It will help make insulin more sensitive and less resistant. It will help lower your blood sugars even if you eat some carbs, believe it or not. And there's some interesting studies, which I'll put down below. Okay, and then we get this lemon, right? You can do either lemon juice, 
or a whole lemon. You can either blend the whole lemon in the blender. It takes a little bit more when you're cleaning things out, but eating the whole lemon gives you some additional benefits if you have time. But if you don't have time, just get some lemon juice and use that. So in lemon juice, you have various things. You have citric acid, you have phytonutrients, You'll have vitamin C if you juice the, the fresh lemon or blend the whole lemon. Lemon juice that's contained in a glass jar uh, is usually pasteurized. It's not raw. And because vitamin C is sensitive to oxygen and heat, it's pretty much going to destroy that vitamin C. But there are other benefits of vitamin C, especially as you're trying to lose weight. But the phytonutrients in lemon juice make insulin more sensitive and they make insulin less resistant. Now, the third component and this is an extra thing, okay? Cinnamon. And you just put a pinch of the cinnamon into this mixture. Cinnamon is one of those things that has a potent effect on making insulin more sensitive and helping your blood sugars be more regulated. In one study, they took uh, 543 diabetics and they tested this cinnamon and the average person dropped their blood sugars by 24 points, which is very significant. So if you can just add a few things to the liquid that you're already drinking, it's a no-brainer. And we're using a compound effect. We're adding several things. Actually, we're adding intermittent fasting, keto, lemon juice, we're adding cinnamon and apple cider vinegar. All of these things are going to contribute and speed things up so you can really get to your goal a lot faster. Now, the other cool thing about these three things is that they all tend to help reduce fat on your liver. Uh, like I said, they reduce insulin, they help blood sugars, they also help regulate your cholesterol. They help your liver make more bile, which has some benefits in itself. Lemon water also has citrates to decrease your risk of getting kidney stones. And all three are very anti-inflammatory. And too much inflammation in the body can actually create a situation where you have insulin resistance. So inflammation can also trigger insulin resistance. All right, so here are the instructions. Very, very simple. You can do this two or three times a day. You want to use 16 ounces of water. You're going to add either an ounce of lemon juice or a whole lemon. You can either blend the whole lemon or just squeeze the lemon juice from one lemon into the water. Then add one to two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. I don't recommend Bragg's apple cider vinegar. I recommend Fairchild's because that is the source behind Bragg's and they don't dilute it. And I'm not affiliated. I don't get any kickbacks, but that's a really superior apple cider vinegar. It comes with the mother, it's organic, and it's concentrated. If you look at the ingredients in Bragg's apple cider vinegar, they add water. So basically they dilute it. Then take your cinnamon and just put a pinch into this container. You can either shake it up or blend it. And so some people that drink this might not like the taste, okay? It might be too bitter. So you might want to add a few drops, liquid stevia. If you don't know what that is, it's an extract from a plant that's sweet without the sugar. And you just need a few drops and it'll just taste just like lemonade. Or some people use my electrolyte powder, one scoop. And that way you get some electrolytes with the sweetener, which is stevia. So after you mix this up, I would recommend drinking this before your meals. Now, if you're just doing one meal a day, first and second one are going to be on the empty stomach. And the third one will be right before a meal. Now, the next most important thing to understand is how to do the ketogenic diet Okay, step by step. And I put that video up right here. Check it out.